Welcome back to another episode of Live Sarangate with us, Peter and Andrea. Today we are doing something a little bit different. Peter and I had the opportunity to sit down with the amazing Amanda Kassilagin, the founder of Grind Social Media and Co., and the host of her Marketing Sex podcast to talk about all things marketing and skincare. Amanda is a serial entrepreneur who built her first seven-figure business in her 20s. With over 15 years of experience in branding, digital marketing, and social media, Amanda has created Grind Social Media to help other businesses make their mark in the online world. Together, we sat down and talked about building a hyper-successful e-commerce beauty brand. We talked about launching new products and product lines. Email marketing, our most loved products, which we couldn't agree on, our beauty industry standards, and so much more. We really hope you enjoy listening to this conversation as much as we enjoyed having it. Hi, welcome to Love Saranghe with Peter and Andrea. In the next 30 minutes, we'll take you on a journey into the exciting world of entrepreneurship, relationships, and the secrets behind achieving that coveted glow. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome back to Marketing Sucks. I am Amanda, your host. And today, what sucks is building a product brand and skincare (laughs) and all of the things. (laughs) So we are so, so grateful to have Peter Lee and Andrea Murad from Sarangai. I, I said that wrong, right, Peter? It's how many months has it been? Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Every I'm single so, time. I'm so it, sorry. Sarangai. 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 You know, there's like days where I'm like, I'm nailing the name of this. And then there's most days where I'm like, he's going to kill me. It's been like it's all a right. year. All right. <laughs> most people get it wrong. It. I can yeah. say it that It's <laughs> fine. So that company name and Aurora Skin Science. And they are both two award-winning Korean skincare companies. And also Peter and Andrea are married. They have <laughs> a lovely family. So we are going to dive in today and we're going to talk all things product launches, e-commerce. But before we do any of that, I would love to know the story behind the brands, how they came to be and like, what was like, why? Why Korean skincare? And so I'll let whichever one wants to start, I'll let you guys take it away. Well, long story, long story. Where do we start? So Saranghae, which means I love you in Korean, was a brand that we started before, I guess, Marcus was born. So 2016, yeah. was the year he was born. 2016 was when the brand started. But the formulations and the products go way back. It goes back about 50 years to when my mother used to be in the skincare industry. So she was a formulator and she was working for a company called Amore Pacific, which is the 10th largest skincare company in the world and the largest in, in Asia. So we sort of, we were when, when Andrea and I were looking for something to kind of collaborate on, you know, I sold my marketing company or at least I stepped away from it. And we wanted to do something together. And we, we decided it was Korean skincare because one, the legacy of my mother's work in skincare. And also we just thought that Korean skincare was very cool. It was, it was increasing in popularity. We saw lots of Korean, the Laneige was all over the place in, in, in Sephora. I think at the time the face shop was, was expanding too in, in, in North yeah, America. Right. So we were like, hey, this is something that we can really be good at because you know we've been doing this for, the family's been doing this for years. So mm-hmm. why not why not continue that legacy? So that's telling a story. Hold on, you're missing like a whole important part. Well, I don't want to spend you know the entire. No, 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 no. This is important. Can I? Yeah, go point? ahead. Go. <laughs> this is heavy, way. So Peter's mother was not really. She she basically came up with a formula because her sister had burn scars. Mm. And none of the doctors could help her. And she was so depressed and she was really upset. So her her sister, which is Peter's mother, being the creative genius that she is, she went into the kitchen and she's pulling out all these concoctions of mushroom and all kinds of things and just whipping it up and trying it on her sister. And what she didn't expect was not only did it help her significantly with the burn scars, it also helped with redness, 
fine line to make calls, hyperpigmentation, all the other things that so many women were coming to her asking her for help with. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Yeah, it's very cool. I also yeah. love that you guys just take over. So I'm just going to, it's your show now. Also, we forgot to mention, they are the co-hosts of Love Sarhan. I'm not going to say the name. Love I, Now I, I am back, so Amanda. self-conscious <laughs> now. Now I'm so self-conscious of it. Love Sarhan Gay. The podcast, which is awesome because it talks all about like skincare and life and all like the Q&A. So if you are a skincare freak like me, then you need to go listen to that one. So let's get back to the questions that I have for you. So... Obviously, you know, you guys started this business, you're married, you have small kids. Marcus was just born when the like the evolution of this is, is happening. And I want to know like how the brand, you know, that we know now, like how has it evolved over time? Like what would you say is like one big significant like change or something that has consistently stayed through? Like how would you say it's evolved? Well, I think I think a lot of it has stayed the same and a lot of it has evolved throughout the years, right? So when we first started, it was all about Korean botanicals. So just a little backstory, just like, you know, when you go out to Mexico or South America, aloe vera is very popular and it's been around for ages, right? Anybody you go down there, aloe, aloe vera has been known as a you know skincare ailment or a, or a healer for a long time. In Korea mm -hmm. right now, I think snail is the big ingredient, but the mushroom the black hoof mushroom has been used for over six to 700 years. Like it's been, it was the original ingredient that people drank in tea form. They use it in skincare. They use it as, as a medicinal for medicine as well as food. So when we first started, it was really based off that mushroom and based off of Asian botanicals like Centella Asiatica and a bunch of other things. Now we've changed, we've kind of pivoted and focused to more skin concern oriented. So, you know, we've really embraced vitamin C, the antioxidant, vitamin B3, which is niacinamide, retinol, bakucho. Yeah. So we've, we're, no, we're no longer just looking at the historical or the traditional way that Koreans mm -hmm. were, many, or, were coming up with skincare. Now we're expanding to include all sorts of techniques and ingredients and mixing them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? it's more like a marriage now. It's a partnership instead of being one or the other. Now yeah. we're becoming more... Yeah. Which I have a I, comprehensive skincare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. Like having have worked in this in the skincare beauty industry for like almost a decade before this business. I, I really love your brand. Like I use it religiously. I like it because it does have like that targeted skin concern, but it has the traditional elements of Korean skincare and like just like the simplicity and the ease and the and it's just like really good clean ingredients. Like I'm a, you know, I'm a label person. So I feel like it's nice because it's approachable, right? So a lot of times what I find is that skincare can be like really daunting for somebody. Like, I don't know where to start. So I'm just going to continue to use soap and like, I don't know, whatever moisturizers in my, like my body moisturizer for my face and I gasp and it's awful. So I like that it, it is quite approachable and you're just like, oh, this is what I need for this. And this is what I need for that. And then also that you guys just have a team of like consultants that can a like answer questions and help people determine what they need. So I really like that. I like that combination of what you've done here. So what I want to know is like, how did you identify that gap? Like, where were you at when you were looking or were you doing research? Like, where was it when you were like, ah, this is exactly what we need to do? Because I do want to talk about the Aurora line for a quick sec with that crazy, crazy serum and cream combo. Because that shit is like, <laughs> that is like crack. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, like crack. It's like, the, it's, it's so good. <laughs> it's it's a foundational school for sure. And we'll get into that. Well, the, yeah. the how we got into the idea of well, not the idea, but the direction of leaning into the skin concerns mm -hmm. and, you know, looking at specific ingredients to address those skin concerns uh, is that we ran a ask an expert page or a section mm -hmm. for a long time. And what we found was that eventually after about, I guess, you know, three to four years of starting the brand, which was very successful initially because Korean skincare was very, very popular and, and everybody was intrigued about the mushroom. We started, we started getting questions from our customers like, I love your product, but... I'm suffering from hyperpigmentation. Love your product, but I have acne issues. My daughter has acne issues. I have melasma. You know, I just came back from pregnancy and I have these spots. What, what's happening with me? And what really struck me in Andrea was that I thought that people had a rudimentary idea of what skincare would be. Like they would know, I, I use a, you know, a cleanser, moisturizer serum, and this is what my skin. But, you know, what I, we've learned is that 
the vast majority of folks out there don't know a lot about, or they're very, you know, they, yeah, they don't know a lot about their skin, how it's how things affect their skin, and what to do about skincare in general. So we realize that there's a lot of room here, or at least there's an opportunity for us to educate and help educate the, our customers, and that's how it was born. Mm-hmm. I love this because you're doing everything that people should do in business, which is listen to your ideal market and then deliver what they need, <laughs> which a lot of people for yeah. some reason to the this back, day, the back, the back. Yeah. Like they fight that so hard. I'm like, well, they told me they needed this, but I'm going to go and do that over there instead yeah. and then wonder why it doesn't work. So I really love that because you're, you're very, very right. Working in skincare for as long as I did, I realized how little the population knows about their skin to this day. Like I get calls from friends being like, I know you're not in the industry anymore. And then they're like, can I send you a picture of a product I'm going to buy? And I'm like, you throw that away. Do not buy that. <laughs> <laughs> like you, like you just burn your money. Like that's just stupid. Don't buy that. Go buy this. So yeah. and like, I you think know, it's like, also like, like making it accessible, like mm-hmm. having yeah. people feel comfortable to ask. And that's why we have so many ways to get in to yeah. speak with us on mm-hmm. the website, through the podcast, on Instagram, social People just don't know where to go. And yeah. the easier it is to ask, if you're able to ask, then the more likely you will get to ask, which is yeah. what we want. But you know, the one thing that I think your listeners will appreciate though, is I don't advocate for it just being a me too. Just because my customers want a hyperpigmentation doesn't mean that I could have just gone out and got, you know, just just replicated a formula that looks like a me too. But no, we went out and, and, and brought forth a formulation that was very unique in the marketplace, which is 25% vitamin C concentrate, mm-hmm. which is the highest L-ascorbic acid concentration out there. And we, we stabilized that with 1% tranexamic acid, which is being, tranexamic acid, for those who don't know, is, being, is the ingredient that the experts are replacing hydroquinone with right now. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult to, to stabilize those two ingredients together due to like due to instability, due to the vitamin C oxidizing too quickly, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of issues that we had to deal with. My point is, though, is that, is that if you're going to solve a problem, though, put a, put a twist to it. Make your, mm-hmm. you know, include your own personality or something that makes you a little bit more unique than the competition out there, which I think, is, I think it pertains to a lot of business, all, you know, not just skincare, but all of business. Right. Mm-hmm. You also just took my next question, which was oh, how do you, you come go. up with new formulations? <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. You guys are just on the same page. All my recordings have gone like this today. It's like the person answered the next question. I was like, this is so nice and seamless. Beautiful. So in terms of like when we're looking at, you know, e-commerce brands in specific, we know how difficult it is. So what would you say is the most challenging component of an e-commerce brand specifically yeah. in like the skincare world? Like what would you nail down as like, what, I'm sure there's lots of challenges. What's one of the most challenging components? Well, I'll let Andrea answer this one first. Go ahead, babe. Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad I got to say something. I would say there's so many challenges. I think one of them is just getting the word out. Like mm-hmm. if you think of email marketing, but it used to work really well with our community, with all the restrictions now on, you know, with promotions and but just not getting seen. So often our customers will say, I didn't get the sale email and I'm not on social. So I missed it. And then we'll tell them, did you check your spam folder? And of course it's in there. So mm-hmm. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges that we said. Peter, would you, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, def- there's there's challenges in all facets of the business, from marketing to distribution to product formulation to everything, right? So one of the big challenges we've we faced recently after the pandemic was mm-hmm. is that our lead time from product order to product landing in North America from Korea has now increased to four to five months instead of, instead of two and a half months to three, which means that forecasting is much more difficult. So, you know, running out of product, getting stuck in borders, those are all things that we've experienced and, and it's crushed our business a few times in the past just because we just don't have a product to sell. So that's, that's one. And then the changing landscape of our partners, some partners, you know, they went out of business. So for example, 
the packaging industry in South Korea, like bottles mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, like components, it got wiped out during the pandemic. So there are no more packaging companies in South Korea. It's just too low value for South Korea. So they all now go to China for packaging and then they bring it to South Korea and then South Korea fills it to their formulation. So that adds like two months to the, to the process. So these are little things that we you just did not anticipate because there was a very lively and very vibrant packaging scene in South Korea. We visited a lot of those companies. They're all gone. Mm. Yeah. So those are the, some of the, that's, that's another, you know, challenge. Yeah. I think this is important to note, especially when we choose the companies that we support as well. Like although you guys are a sizable company, you're still a family run business. Right. And it's, yeah. so it's nice to support those. And, and you have a different mission, I think, behind this brand. You can tell that in like your podcast, the way you speak about it, the events that you go to, all of the things that you're doing online is that it's more about this education and making it approachable and making it really like a skincare for all with all the different like innovations in the formulas and stuff that you're doing too. So it's forward thinking, but it's not complicated and, and complex. But I think people need to remember like, don't just go and support like the big box brands. Like it's nice to shop direct and to support those companies because there's a lot of work that goes behind the scene. This isn't just like, oh, I pour a formula out of a bottle into another bottle and then it magically is at your door 24 hours later. Like the amount of time it takes for you to go from formula to bottle to like testing and then back to formula and then back to yeah. bottles and then testing again. And then like, you know, you go through all those things it, and then it's actually in the client's hand or the customer's hand. So but we do when, it with love. Like we we do do it. It. Yes, you do. A hundred percent. But it is you, so you, much work and there's a, there's a lot of, you know, gray hairs coming out of it, but we love it. It's, it's so much, it's exciting and it's fun to create something that we think that our community will love. And it's, it's, you know, kind of empowering too that we mm -hmm. did this. Well, well, the one thing that Amanda just mentioned kind of kind of jogged my my gears here a little bit, but I think pre the biggest challenge actually is on the marketing side is that especially in North America, because there are the rules that govern ingredients and formulation in North America, especially the U.S., is mm -hmm. so is such so so wide and so less much less stringent than Europe and Asia that mm -hmm. you can basically launch a skincare company with no backing, no science, just just base base you know put some chemicals together and and sell it in, in Amazon for two two thousand fifty cents. And there are mm -hmm. thousands of brands that do this, right? Thousands. But the consumers in North America don't know that there's no way for them to check uh, that if one's uh, whether one's legit or not. And so I think you know the, there's just such a, a, an explosion of competitors that that are just out there to get, grab a quick dollar. I know a number of companies that, for, for a fact, do not test their products before they they sell. So yeah. you're as a customer, you're the person, you're the one that's actually testing the product for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, that's that's been a very big challenge as a as a North American skincare provider. Yeah, I think also it's like, and then people wonder why they don't get results. And then they get, they're like, oh, well, I spent so much money on that and it did nothing. And I'm like, well, you spent the money on the wrong thing because if you knew how to read your ingredients or you actually like were educated, like just go to the website, read about the ingredients. Like if the company isn't sharing that kind of information, it makes me wonder like what actually is inside the bottle. And a lot of the times, like you guys know, I like immediately, I'm like, I love this ingredient list. I love like how potent this is. Like this is incredible. We don't see percentages like this. Like this is new. This yeah. is innovative. And but, so yeah, this is the percentages. So just because yeah. the, it's on the label doesn't necessarily mean there's enough of it. Mm -hmm. And also having a lot of something doesn't necessarily mean it will work better. Mm -hmm. So understanding that as well is a big one. So let's talk about the Humacall 19. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. 21. Right. So Humacall 21. 20 why I say 19? What is wrong with me today? I'm just messing with you. Know. Know, and it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I am on a different planet. Let's talk about that for formulation and what you created there. And yeah. then a follow-up question to that is how did you get it to become an award winning? Like what did you do to do that? Because there are so many people out there that want to add that award winning to their things. And they just mm -hmm. like, like, where did you even start? So let's talk about the product first. And then we'll move into the how we got it to the status that it is today. 
Yeah, so Aurora Skin Science Serum and Cream, so Bioactive Collagen Serum, Bioactive Collagen Cream, have a lot of great ingredients in them. So most of them are polypeptides, as you know, that's our short chain amino acids. The main ingredient is, is actually called SH polypeptide 121, and it's a vegan collagen peptide that mimics the, the protein type 21 human collagen or human pro- protein. And what it does is when you introduce SH polypeptide 121, which by the way is humocol 21 as a trade name, your, the body actually thinks that you're flooding its skin cells with, with type 21 protein, which triggers the, the production of collagen and elastin in your body. So we are basically introducing a trigger protein into the body to basically tell our, our body to produce more collagen. So that's mm-hmm. the science behind uh, Humacol 21. And you know, shout out to Geltor and the guys who actually created this, this protein. They're, that's the ingredient partner. They mm-hmm. spent a lot of money and effort in the research to kind of prove that this is actually something that does exactly what they say. And the fact that they're, they're, the, the manufacturing process is very unique. They literally grow the type 21 protein from sugar molecules. So it's actually a fermentation process. So it's not a chemical, it's biology. And it's absolutely the coolest thing that you can, that I've seen to date. It's and we, clinically proven to yeah. work better than retinol and vitamin C. So we, uh, yeah, so we decided to build a product around it. As soon as, you know, as the, the founders of Gel Tour had a conversation, a show, I'm like, I'm sold. We got to build a product around this thing. So we're not the only ones. There's actually a, a, a number of skincare companies now that use Humacol 21, but more, more than that, the, more than that it's actually in foods. So there's a lot, especially in Europe, there's a lot of food companies that use these genetically modified or genetically engineered proteins in their food for protein as, a, as, an, ingre- yeah, as an ingredient. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's getting really popular. So aside from the science, I also would like to mention that if you just imagine like a nice soft, like buttery, velvety feeling on your skin morning and night, it is like the most luxurious feeling product outside of like the firm and lift cream. Like honestly, I love when that thing, like I, I ended up buying Phil his own because I was like, you're not allowed to touch this. Like just use your own because you use way too much. I'm like, I just, I'm like, I want mine. You have yours. And it is, you know, I've gotten all my friends onto it and they all have said the same thing. They're like, wow, my skincare routine actually feels like luxurious, but it's not that pricey. Like it is comparable to a lot of like really great products on the market, but you're not like insanely priced. So that is to note, because if you're looking for something that's beautiful and actually has clinical proven results, that's the one. I want to know now, how did you get that to be an award winning? Like, how did that come about? Because it's pretty popular. So I want to know, like, what did you do to do that? Because a lot of people want that and they don't go after it and it never happens. So I would love to know the story of that. I think that's that's a big point is that a lot of people want that, but they don't go after it. Mm-hmm. So they don't do the thing. And I think that's many of us. So we have these dreams and wishes and hopes, and but they stay as a dream. There's no action behind it. So I would just say that what we did is we applied. We applied, we sent in 10 bottles of Liver collagen cream for them to test. And I think there was 80 or 100. What was what, the number of other companies that we were competing against, Peter? Was it 80? Oh, no, more than that. The number of people were competing was like 250. Oh, okay. Something mm-hmm. like that, yeah. Uh, wow. Did I get 80 from? Anyway, so we, that was our competition, but we applied and we had a strong a- application and our product speaks for itself. Like, even when we go to trade shows and I just, I said, just try it, just try it. Almost Mm -hmm. everybody who tries it buys it because it's that good. So I I speak to that. It just applied. Yeah. Well, and adding to Andrea's point there, we didn't just apply to Chatelaine Fashion Magazine. We applied to just do a Google search on awards for skincare, beauty products. We just applied to everything we could find, to be Mm -hmm. honest. And some didn't get back to us at all. Some said we were just too late. Some wanted Mm -hmm. money. Some said, hey, you got to, pay X number of dollars for us to consider you or buy X number of media dollars. Like you spend $50,000 in, in advertising with us and then we'll, cons- we'll, you know, we'll consider you for the, for the, yeah. And so there's lots of things you have to go through. You pick and choose the ones that you, that are important to you. 
And then you just right. follow up and push. And that's what we did. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that everybody just needs to like take more of a risk when it comes to those things and like what's the worst that can happen, what you don't hear back, but what's the best that can happen. Yeah. You can now put Chatelaine like magazine award winning beauty product on everything, like on your packaging, in your social, on your website. Like you, it, it just gives that social proof and credibility. But if you're not willing to do the actual thing to get that, then like maybe maybe it's just not for you. You know, like I feel like there's a lot of people that sit back a little bit and don't do the actual work. Like, yeah, it, I always I say the magic is in the work that you're not doing. Yeah, that's where the magic lies. I it's in the stuff it. that you're like unwilling to do that you're you're blocked. Like, you're just like, that's the thing over there that I need to do. But I'm going to distract myself with little tasks. I don't want to eat yeah. the frog. Right. And then it's also right. like, I don't want to eat the frog, but then I'm upset when I don't have results. And that's just, it's so upsetting sometimes to see, but unfortunately it's like, we can only leave the horse to water. We can't make it drink. But I, yeah. uh, again, I always think like it's in the magic is when the stuff you're not doing. Yeah. And so I add that if I can mm -hmm. swim again, yeah. that it's also in the belief. Mm -hmm. So yes. I have a very strong belief in our products. Like I know they're awesome. And I, mm -hmm use them every day like I am living proof that this stuff works and I love it so for me it's really just how many people can I get to try this I'll give it to you for free but just try it because I know it will change your life so having yeah. that belief behind the action makes all the difference in my opinion yes I agree with that too I also want to mention one thing before I forget so Andrea here does not do Botox she does do regular facials. I know that. And she just uses her product. I won't say her age, but she is, or unless Karen, you want to say I'm it. very proud of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you're 41? No. 43. 43. Oh, even better. And she, like her skin, like if, like, even if you just see her in person, you're like, are you sure you don't do anything else? And so I'll say like, I've been an avid user of Botox since I was 25. I did it for preventative measures. And I used to go, I would say at least two to three times a year, like every three months. And I would never get a lot. My forehead has always moved. I just didn't like seeing the lines in a resting position. Since using this product for about a year now, no, over a year, I literally have only gone for Botox once. Woo, so, I'm proud of that. And my skin has never looked better. Like it is dewy. It is great. It is amazing. And I always thought like I'm going to need this Botox for the rest of my life. But like, uh -huh. and I probably still will go for little touch ups here and there. Let's be completely honest and real here. But like, it's actually kind of crazy because like you see a lot of products that like promise you everything. And I'm like a big stickler on skincare. And like, I know what your ingredients are and they are phenomenal. And like the proof is in like the, I don't know, $1,500 you saved me in Botox last year. So thank you. I want to thank you both. <laughs> it's fantastic. Sure, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I just wanted to go over one more question, actually two. How do you balance life and business as partners? Because I know like me and Phil, we also work together in some capacity. And sometimes you're just like, I want to murder you, bring that true crime in there one day. But how do you guys balance life and business? Is there a secret to it? Like, what does it look like for you in your home life and your business life? Let's be honest. <laughs> I'll go first because I have a yeah. good answer for this yeah. one. We stay in our own lane. And I think mm. that's the big one. Like Peter has his zone of genius. I have mine. And we let each other kind of go with that. There's there's obviously times where we must collaborate and we want to collaborate. If I have questions, you know, Peter's been in this longer than I have. Of course, I will ask him and him the same, but day to day, he's got his work and I've got mine. And I trust that he's going to do an amazing job. And I believe that he trusts me that I will also do the same. So I think that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we want to kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, anything to add? Well, I mean, there's, we, I've been, you know, I've been, uh, I've had, I've been running my own show, I guess, even before Saranghe Aurora for a long, long for, for years. So it's a long, long time. So I kind of know I've developed some strategies to make things easier and to put walls between things so that things don't kind of merge into each other. So, for example, there's a reason why I have, I don't work from home. We, I, you know, we have a office that mm -hmm. outside office that we, we keep for one of the reasons being that it keeps a, you know, 
a partition between personal life and and professional life. That's important to me. We also plan on we communicate well. Plan plan on set aside time uh, mm-hmm. ahead for everything. So I always say to my wife, if if it's not on the calendar, it's not it hasn't been decided. So we put everything on the calendar. Everything is planned, and sometimes mm-hmm. it goes awry, but not not often. Yeah. Uh, and then we, and then we just you know be kind to each other, be there for each other, and just help out when we can. And it's just you know it does it does help that. My wife does cook, clean, does most of everything in the household, school. I just come to work, then go at home, <laughs> go for my runs. <laughs> I mean, listen, every family has their yeah. way of dealing with it. But I, I always find it really interesting. Like, you know, it, I always say like a partnership is never like 50-50. That's impossible. It'll be 80-20, then 70-30, then 60-40. And, it, you know, it ebbs and flows. It changes all the time. Yeah. yeah, you just re- you just reminded me. So you guys actually did a little stint overseas this summer. You took some time off. You worked abroad. Yes. Tell me about that. We are actually very inspired by you, and I'm so <laughs> grateful that you do this every summer because it makes it makes it feel less bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for I'm those of you that really like, he needs an office, like you said, he needs to go to work. Yeah. And when he's not physically working, he's stressing about work, that he's yeah. not working. He's the big early bird gets the worm kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the more I rest, the more I make. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> we're, we're marrying those two extremes. But I think we're coming closer together. Peter's seeing the value in rest. And I'm seeing a little bit of the value in his hustle. <laughs> I think that's, that's beautiful. Peter, yeah, how was good. it for you? How was uh, it for was you it... having to get out of? I want. I'm going to ask you a very specific question because I'm, I am you in the way that I like to like get up, move. Like I, I move fast, you know, and like I just yeah. I do a lot of the hustle. I do a lot of the rest too, but I, I plan it out. So I want to know how was it for you to actually have to step outside of like your day to day routine and really kind of be unattached to like what the outcome of you living abroad for a couple of weeks was going to yeah. look like while still trying to work. So what did what? How did that feel? It, it's stressful for sure. It's stressful. Yes. I mean, the okay. very first two or th- three, two or three days, you're just you're just you're a ball of stress because you're out of your element, right? You're yeah. like you're you're in a strange place, strange time zone. You're probably yeah. tired like, like crazy from the from jet lag. So you, but you know, a couple of th- you know, you know that you have to get through this because you've got two three weeks ahead. the The goal is to get through, and that's what you work towards. So at least you have a goal to get through, right? I do also, a couple of things is that I do also have a pretty good team. And so Mm -hmm. I trust the team to execute what we have set out to do for the time that I am away. Although Mm -hmm. I will admit that any major projects get swept away. I don't, we don't do any major projects in the time that we're gone. They're gone. They're, you know, it's pushed out to September or it's done earlier. I guess there's a slower month, which is why I typically travel in August. Yeah. Yeah. To handle. Mentally. And and the and the the mind shift that I've come throughout the years, the decades actually, is that when when I first started the marketing business years and years ago, the goal, like any other entrepreneur, was you know you have to have an exit plan. So my goal was to work like like a dog for five years, sell the company, then have enough money to do what I want. Right. So it's always I will work hard now, then I will have a really good payoff, and when the payoff happens, I will enjoy my life. Well, guess what? Mm-hmm. I'm 50 years old now, and the payoff that payoff still hasn't happened to the to the the the, the amount that I I'd like. So now the question is: Do I wait for that payoff, or do I have do I enjoy my life while I'm doing this thing? And and slowly, as, as I have kids now and a family, I think that they have really don't have a choice. It's I've got to learn to enjoy life while I'm you know we're running down this path. Or else it's going to be, I'm going to be 90 years old when I'm finally saying, hey, it's time for me to now go travel to, to Spain. Where's my cane and my walker? No. Yeah. And your so. kids are gone. Yeah. So that's the, the journey. It's really the journey. Yeah. And I think we are more productive and we do better work when we are rested. Yeah. That's, and that's, yeah. yeah and Andrea is right. And that's the shift that I've, I've slowly, over the last three or four years, I've come to, come to realize. And I, I think I've embraced. Yeah, I love that for you guys. And I'm happy that we, ins- our family's insanity has inspired 
your new insanity of trying to work abroad with kids. <laughs> but, uh, you know, no, and I, but I agree with both of you. You know, I think that in the rest comes inspiration and a new outlook on things. And you you sometimes shift a little bit even of how you do things when you're back home. Like I know I do. So and much. even though I, I hustle hard, I still am doing like I slow down a little bit, not by much, but I slow down a little bit when I'm back. But I think it's also in like letting yourself go, like kind of like that just, it's just like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to have to make it work. And it's like that spontaneity that sometimes we lose in our scheduled day-to-day life and like that like monotony and the routine. So it's kind of nice to like switch it up a little bit. But then I also agree that it's, you know, you do have one life to live. You don't know what's beyond this, regardless of what you believe, like nobody knows. And so why not enjoy the fruits of your labor now still while being responsible for the future? But I think I I agree. And I think it's fun for the kids to also see mom and dad, you know, they've worked hard, they play hard. And and so goes the cycle. So a couple last questions before we wrap up here. What is your favorite product? And why? Ooh, let's see. Andrea. <laughs> you can only choose one. You have to choose one. I know you love them all, but I want you to like, I, oh, I know this, the faces is hilarious. I know you love That's them all. So I love unfair. them all. Because I know it's unfair. You have, have one. You have to have a combination so that they all work together. My favorite has always been Aurora. Aurora is my baby. I love it so much. The moisturizer is my favorite. I use it day and night. So I, and I just, I love how light it is, how quickly you feel it. Like it's, if, if you haven't used it for a while and then you use it again, the first use you notice something. Mm-hmm. So I love that. And it, it, it solves a lot of problems just from that one product. But I have to slide in that if you're not cleansing your face, then none of these products are going to work well. <laughs> I have to say that. Yeah. Yes. We yeah. Know so, <laughs> so as a as a, I'm gonna have to probably give a, a similar answer to Andrea. So, mm-hmm. as a as a skincare guy, I have to say that the Aura Bioactive Collagen Cream is my number one. You know, mostly because it is the most versatile of all the products. If there's nothing that you can do for your face, at least moisturize. Just mm-hmm. moisturize and seal, and you'll mm-hmm. probably get fifty percent there with skincare. Right? Then. I got to do a close second because I have okay, combination, okay. combination skin. I, I absolutely love the 2% AHA, BHA. Like mm, that thing resurfaces. Good. Yeah. So when you resurface your skin, cleanse first, obviously, but when you resurface that skin and then you hydrate and moisturize, resurface the skin, hydrate and moisturize. Well, that's what basically you're doing the two basics of skincare, which is, you know, taking the dead stuff off and renewing helping to renew. Mm-hmm. I, there's a two big components of skincare right there. So yeah, I got to I gotta slide that in. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add mine in. It's also a combo because I can't even answer my own question properly. My combo that I used all summer that literally got rid of like the sun damage that I did the year before, even though I wear sunscreen, I'm just very susceptible to hyperpigmentation, niacinamide and snail serum. Yeah. That combo... I did a before and after for you guys because I was just like, you need to see these results. I was like, I'm going to do before. Let's see what happens in the three months I was there. 90 days, my skin not only was like tight and hydrated, but the the hyperpigmentation was gone and I was still in the sun all summer. And that was the other thing I loved. I'm like, oh my God, this isn't sun sensitive. Like I'm going to wear sunscreen regardless, but I'm not going to like risk burning my face off this summer like when you use other products, right? Anyways, I can't answer my own question, so I shouldn't have asked that one. (laughs) All right. Before we head off, are there any upcoming launches that we can get excited about? Any new products what? coming our way? A- Andrea, uh, please share. Please uh, share. There's so many. There's so many. Should we tell them about them all? I just didn't miss one. Let's do a quick one. The, so the, the, the first two launching in November are? Bakusha and so, Retina. Yeah. Bakusha is the vegan Retina. Yeah. And Retina is. So, yeah, no. <laughs> so I will. Yeah, I, I, I was just looking at it today, so I'm, I've got it in my head. So we got a, we've got a two percent bakuchio with fifteen percent squalane, which is the anti aging vegan line formula, and then we have a 0.1 percent retinol with two percent two percent squalane, which is obviously our anti aging retinol line or retinoic acid. We have a collagen lip serum that's launching in the, in December 
which is fantastic. Uh, we've, we've been waiting for this for forever. It's been two years, and it's like it's it's so good. I love it. And then, kind of back up. The reason why we have the Bakusha vegan and the retina, the regular retina, is not everybody can use retina. It's a mm-hmm. pregnant, breastfeeding. Some people are super sensitive. But the Bakusha, everybody can use. It's for sensitive mm-hmm. skin, and it's amazing. Well, also, retinol is, we're doing it. It's, it's actually meant for day night. So retinol, what was the 0.1% retinol is, if you're not using, yeah, 0.1% retinol is for night routine. The, the, the bakuchiol is meant for the day routine because as you, are, you already know, retinol without sunscreen will make your skin sensitive to UV. So yeah. we want to avoid that. Yeah. yeah. And then it causes damage instead of the, exactly. the of what you need. Exactly. Do Amazing. What it, what it so we are going to post about all of that. I am going to add all of the links to the show notes of our faves and also to the actual product lines. And then they have been so gracious, Peter and Andrea, to give us a code for all the listeners. So we have 20% off all products. You have to use Grind Social 20. So G-R-I-N-D-S-O-C-I-A-L-2-0 at checkout. And if you have any questions, send them a message. Send me a message. I'm happy to let you know what I love. I technically still have my licensing for medical aesthetics. So like <laughs> I could recommend whatever you need. <laughs> Do a quick skincare Perfect. consult. But, but yeah, but truly, honestly, like I love what the brand stands for. I love you guys. I think what you've created is so wonderful and what you stand for is truly shown in everything that you do. Go listen to their podcast. And until next week, thank you so much. And thank we'll talk you. to you all soon. Thank you. That was great. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Live Saturday with us, Peter and Andrea. If you've enjoyed this episode, leave us a review. Your ratings and reviews help more people like you find our show. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode and share this podcast with someone you think would love it. Until next time, love yourself, love one another, and love the world.